I'm gonna go ahead and pick right here to start. All right, well, let's tackle this G. It's a Mercedes Benz. It's a GLE 550E. And the E at the end just means that this is a, it's actually a hybrid. So, but let's go ahead and tackle this bumper. This also, this vehicle also, I don't know, I believe it has a night package on it or they've had some additional parts painted because this, uh, the bottom part of the bumper on a lot of these that you find are, is going to be chrome, but this one's painted. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, you know, I've already picked the starting point and we'll go ahead and tack this down. One thing that you'll see me do quite a bit, like I just did there, is I'll, I'll stick my finger into those areas that keep popping back up just to hold them down for a couple seconds. And then that, it will be long enough that that'll stick it, you know, stay down. So what we're going to do is just below the back of the headlight there we're going to go ahead and line that spot up and put a little stretch on this just to help get rid of some of those fingers that are underneath the headlight and then we'll go ahead and squeegee all of this out now when you're ever you're tacking to a certain point you want to make sure to keep your next points in mind so you can see there that i've got the material stretched to the next tack point as well it's always important to be looking forward to during the install to make sure that you don't you tack something in a spot and then you have to go back and lift it all up because it's not lined up for the rest of the bumper. So right here I'm just spraying in some tack solution. Go ahead and get these areas stuck down. That'll really help these fingers to stick down real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and, and figure out where we're going to stretch down to. And that's definitely going to be the next tack point is down down here. So I'll stretch this down, make sure everything's lining up, and then we'll go ahead and uh, tack this edge, and then we can go back and squeegee everything above it out. As you can see also that got rid of all the fingers there in the wheel well, so that that's fantastic. So we'll go ahead and spray a little bit of tack solution back in here behind my hand. That way we can get this area, there's a little bit of a recess there, so it likes to pop out of that spot. So I'll go ahead and push it out, and then I'll go um, and then do my press and hold. So that's like a little pre-wrap right there. And that'll tack that very edge so we don't have issues with it popping up again as we continue on with the rest of the bumper. So with these parts, when I wrap these areas in, a lot of times if there's not a lot of stretch, I'll just go ahead and just use just the soapy water and just reserve the tack solution for areas that have much more tension that aren't going to want to stay stuck down. And the nice thing about just using the tack solution, and or I'm sorry, just using the soapy water solution and not jumping to using a tack solution is that you can always lift those areas back up then and not really have to, I mean, you know, relatively soon, it's not something you can let sit there for a half hour and then lift it up. But if I needed to pull the, some of those areas back up real quick, that is much easier to do without leaving lift lines if you've only used the, 
slip solution to tack it down. So in all these areas here, you just want to make sure and, and fold everything over and push it into the recess that it's going to go into and make sure it lines up real well. So obviously this area here could use some, definitely use some alcohol, which is just the tack solution. But that, that's the same maneuver, I use it all the time, where I stick my finger in there and hold it, and then that tacks that spot down, and I don't have to worry about it popping up so much. I mean, you'll see me use that a bunch of times throughout an install. Because this has sat uh, so long and this has already started to cure as far as the, you know, the uh, adhesive has started to dry out. What we don't want to do is just stretch this up to cover that little gap there. What we want to do first is tack down a little bit more of the material in a spot that's wet. And then let that sit for just a few seconds. Now this area is starting to stick and so when we stretch, it'll stretch all in here. Um, but if you just leave that line right there that's already really stuck, then when you pull this, you're gonna leave a stretch line right here where the material was already stuck. So And it's not, it doesn't want to stick right here. So we're gonna make it stick, put a little bit of uh, the alcohol solution in there. And what I'll do is when I push it down, I'll kind of follow it up with my finger and hold it in place for a few seconds. She doesn't want to stick here either. really hot today so um, I added a I don't know if you can hear that in here that's the air conditioner running um, I added some more slip to my solution and I think I put in just a little too much it's not really gonna affect the job but it uh, you know it's making things just a little bit less tacky than I'd like them before I stick this part I'd like to get this part stretched to like the center point we're gonna pull this back and make sure everything's good and wet and nothing is stuck down. Don't pull real hard because you will stretch on that line that's already started there where the adhesive has started to dry. Oh. And I want this to stick real good so that when I come back and push this up into it, this doesn't pop up. So we're gonna put a little, basically any spot you want it to stick, like right now is where you put a little rubbing alcohol. Get this up in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start up here. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna get this top edge lined up incredibly well, and then I'll take care of all this. It's most important that the seam comes out really, really good. So when you're putting these seams together, you'll notice that in this, you know, I spend quite a bit of time at this seam and that's because I want 
I mean, the, the seam that butts together incredibly well. I want that to not hold wax over time. And so I'll spend, you know, many minutes pulling the material back up, pushing it back down, and just making sure that I get an incredibly tight seam. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually lift with one hand and then I'll run, run my finger or my thumb across the other one, which you kind of see me doing here. And basically what I'm doing is just to feel and make sure that it's really tight, that I'm not over and I'm not um, leaving a gap. Alright, we've got a really nice tight seam, which hopefully I'll be able to show you guys later. Alright, now we need to get all this down. We've got this little edge here, which we know is going to go right here. So we want to stretch that into place, and that should hopefully help the rest of this kind of lay down. Just going to go right there. See what we can do here and by kind of pushing it down in there you see it's going to lay in there real nice and if i give it just a little bit of stretch that way it even will go in better let's get this excess water out well here let's do it again. let's let that pop up kind of fold it over on itself a little bit right there Put some more moisture back underneath that and then this next time it goes down it'll go down Beauty. All right, we're gonna leave all this, put a little bit of soapy water in there. We need to get this other part down before it starts tacking this other half of the bumper. So let's back you up here. Bring you on up. 7% battery life, so we're gonna be taking care of that pretty soon. Great. All right, let's get the second half done. We know that it's gonna be really important that when we stretch that we get this spot again. And since we use it to start over there, let's go ahead and use it to start on this side as well. want to check this is going to lay over across the top here we just want to check and make sure that it's not going too far in and that it's also not too far back whether that'll determine whether we need to pull down on this or pull up on this to get a little bit more on the top here it looks real good so what i'm going to do here i'm going to get the top down across this and then i'm going to bring everything down since that's kind of the way the gravity goes anyway, just when you're working with it instead of against it.
All right, now let's get this stuff going down. All right, let's get back to work. Fresh batteries. Everybody gets a battery. You get a battery, I get a battery. This car does not get a battery though. That's expensive, I'm sure. All right. Since I'm sitting right here, I'm gonna go ahead and push this on up. We're hanging over the edge just a little bit right there so we let that dry a bit and then we'll come back and push that right down in all right let's see here let's go how about like that yeah All right. All right, so now I'm gonna stretch up to here so we can get rid of some of these fingers. This is hanging over quite a bit up here. Let's see what we've got here. So we can definitely bring this down about right there. And that looks good. All right, so this up here, we're gonna put a little bit of alcohol in it right from the get-go. With that little bit of extra soap. We know it's not gonna wanna stick. Let's see, can we get in here to see this a little better? There we go. So these little guys are trying are popping back up. So the technique I'm using to hold those down is going to be um, going past them and then pushing down on them with this part of the squeegee on the very edge. OK. 
Okay. All right, now to get rid of, I mean, these fingers are pretty much already stuck there because this is starting to cure already. This has been pushed out. And you don't want to pull this back up in order to help with those fingers at all. Because once this starts to cure, you're going to leave some kind of a lift line in it. Unless you're really careful, it's just not worth you know, the effort. I can just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol underneath those and they'll push right out. All right, so where we want to stretch down to, uh, first what we're going to do is let's get a new stretch, new area to stretch from mm -hmm. that hasn't been stuck down and curing. All right, now we're going to see where we need to line up down here. There. I got rid of most of those fingers anyway. Nice. Oop. All right, so first things first, let's get this down. That way it can start to cure in this area before we try to uh, bump that into it to close up that seam real good. So it's real easy on these areas where, you, where you're going over these lips and then going underneath or on a lower part of the bumper like that. And just make sure that you're getting that edge squeegeed out really well. You're doing a lot of overlapping strokes when you're getting all of the water out of that edge. That's, those type of areas are definitely difficult to, more, more difficult to, to squeegee out. Just take your time and get that edge squeegeed out real well. pattern really lines up really well on the, with that grill. All right, that looks good. Get this line, the seam lined up real good. Ooh. Okay, that'll be that'll be fine. When we stretch it this way, it'll help get rid of some of that. That's a lot, quite a bit of extra.
It's pretty dark right here. Even though I've got some lights on, I'm gonna grab a LED light, flashlight. A little, that's a little better. All right, beauty. Okay, now let's get this all taken care of here. Look at that, some of that even fixed itself already because of the stretching we did here to line that seam up. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is stick this top down. Again, what we're gonna do is get this guy right here on this little corner. I'm gonna do a little bit of alcohol this time so it sticks real good. Stretch it down. Squeegee that out. get this down here let's see if we can get in here together and do this <laughs> kind of in the way all right let's see what we can do so i'm kind of checking to see here where this is going to end it needs a little bit of stretch. So I'm gonna put a little stretch on it and then I'm gonna go ahead and tack it like this and bring the water this way and then I'm gonna take the rest of it up and over. Now, yeah.
wrapping some of the material over the edges. I start right here. You know these new cameras they let's see what temperature is it in here? It is 79 degrees, so the thermostat says. But these cameras just like to overheat. And my guess is it's not even that warm in here. It's pretty damn comfortable, so I think that. All right, here we go. It's important when you're doing these edges that you, when you're wrapping all this type of stuff, that you get your, um, you get these edges really good and make sure there's no moisture left behind. Otherwise, when you show up tomorrow to finish this job or later in the day, you're gonna have water bubbles that dry and then leave air pockets and then you've got to you know deal with those GoPro for the win today. Sony overheating. GoPro not overheating today. Some days it's the other way around. I know these things are really, you know, they kind of design these things to be like outside or moving, not necessarily sitting still. So they do get hot in here. Well, I've got to tell you, it's not that hot in here, <laughs> but they, they pack a lot into these little cameras these days. All right, that's looking good. Oh, still popping up right here. A little bit more alcohol on it and... Gone. All right. Ooh, this guy's popping up. All right, let's get this one down. Get out of here, Sony.
All right, now let's get all this down. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see where to start. I'm gonna start right here in the middle today. I am gonna put a little alcohol in here. gonna do is tuck this in uh, well maybe we're gonna tuck it in there we go very nice put some more alcohol on all this get it nice and tacky Butay. Let's go over to this side. Roll this part here.
All right, so all of this area I did, I made the pattern larger so we could wrap it in. So normally on the pattern in the computer, this would be cut around like right here, all the way around. This is another area where you want to pay a lot of attention to that edge. Make sure you're not leaving any moisture behind underneath the material right on the edge. Definitely, you know, so keep an eye on those spots and, you know, watch that technique that I'm using there. I'm sure there's, there's a couple different, at least a couple different techniques that I use in areas like that. They can make sure that I'm getting that edge pushed out really well. So right there you could tell I lifted the material up a little bit because I had started to roll the material over the edge and I left like probably like a little area of water or maybe air. So you'd, you'd see something like that, get, you know, best to catch it right away and then just pull that film or pull that material back a little bit and you know, squeegee that part back out. Wrap all this. Go ahead and chomp this down. Looking good. Let's see, what else do we need to do? We can get these top ones. We can roll this stuff over back. Let's do that.
That looks good. Go ahead and hit this little top part. We'll let all these areas cure a bit this is uh it's good and then you know these we've got little edges here and those just really i mean i'm just kind of messing around right now but um <laughs> really just wasting time on those more than anything they may pop right back up they're gonna need a little bit of heat with the heat gun and a glove and they will lay right down so all right and then i'll also cut out these parking sensors later let's get down here all right so if these part if parking sensors are ever like protruding from the bumper they're not flush then you want to cut them off right away because what they're going to do is they'll they hold the material up basically yeah that looks nice uh let's try a different way here so they hold the material up and then what you'll end up with when as the material dries is uh everywhere that there's air all the way around the edge will have like a little line so then we don't want that so but this one's nice and flush so we're fine there all right let's go ahead and get the bottom part of this bumper on basically this whole this whole bottom part on the side the both the left and the right side of the bumper here you know it's a lot of kind of you know the squeegeeing is is a little bit awkward because there's a lot of contours and a lot of bends and you're you know you're trying to get the material to stretch and go over all these areas so just make sure you're doing a lot of overlapping and that you're getting good coverage as far as the removing the soapy water from there the slip solution it was super easy in these areas to leave to leave water behind especially on the on the edges or on the curves the creases in the in that part of the bumper so we'll give it a little stretch here and get rid of some of these fingers and basically the way that I'm going to decide how much stretch this needs is by lining up the back left side of that with the end of the that part of the bumper. Lining the pattern up back in there. And that makes those fingers there really, really manageable. So that technique I'm using right there, we call, I think I call it like slapping. So I'm just slapping the water out of there, which just where I come through pretty uh, hard and fast and squeegee that water out. So I'm gonna put a little stretch on this here. So what I'm doing is stretching like towards the back of the car as well as switch, stretching a little bit towards the center. So to the right. And that's going to help me get rid of all those fingers that were there. All right, we'll get some little bit more uh, rubbing alcohol in here and then we'll push down all these fingers. Well, at least I think I'm going to put some tack solution in there. Yep, there it is.
So right there at the end of that, you could see that I wiped everything down with the towel or the rag and dry everything off. And because that was such a, you know, there's so many turns and curves and things right there that we're trying to stretch the material over. It's a good idea to wipe that down when you're done so you can double check and make sure you didn't that you didn't leave any water bubbles behind. All right, so on the center part here, the GoPro obviously is not recording, or I mean, I'm, I know it's, it's obvious for me. <laughs> so on this center part here, the GoPro unfortunately was not recording. So this is the only angle that I have. And so some of this I'm gonna speed through because it's really stuff that we can't see anyway. But what I did is tacked all the way on the right hand side and then I'm gonna stretch over to the left here, basically until all the fingers are stretched out. So this, this piece of material actually, it actually ends up being quite, probably like, it looks like about a three quarters to an inch long after being stretched. And then at the, after the install, we'll go ahead and trim that part off. So here's where I sped it up because you can't really see what I'm doing anyway that well. And then once we get all the way over here to the left, we'll go ahead and slow it back down and then go over the install. Basically, there's some recesses on these. And the way that I'm tackling these recesses, I think there's like three of them. The way that I'm tackling these recesses is by squeegeeing out the center of the recess first and tacking that part down. And then I go back and do the each, you know, on the left and the right where the recess begins and ends. And what I'm doing there is I'm taking my thumb and I'm pu pushing it, the material down with my thumb in that recess and then I'm squeegeeing everything out. So like right there, I'm gonna take my thumb in the recess, follow all the way to the end of the material and that will help tack that part down and get rid of all the moisture and air that's in that very corner and then I just squeegee everything out. And it's the same process for all three of those recesses. So we'll put a little tack solution in here and then we'll go ahead and squeegee this out and then it'll be time to trim this off. Now, if you wanted to wait and tack or wanted to wait and cut it later, then you could probably just let it sit there and cure. But because I want to cut it off right now, I went ahead and, and put some tack solution in there. 
it's kind of a dark angle so I went in and grabbed my LED flashlight and then we'll go ahead and trim this part off I use that LED flashlight a decent amount during my installs it really helps out in those tight areas or those areas where the lights aren't really reaching Currently we just have lights. I've got a couple lights that sit behind me and then we've got all the lights on the ceiling and so sometimes these areas get a little dark. We just finished a little upgrade at the shop and so now we're going to be installing lights on the walls and things to definitely you know, help get some more light in the lower areas closer to the floor. So on that there, you can see I used a, the Bondo card with the felt on the end. And the felt will help soak up some of the moisture as you go over the edges. Just another tool that I use from time to time. The felt also helps keep you from scarring or scratching the material. It just helps it slide a lot easier as well. So I'm kind of just checking everything there with the light. Making sure I didn't leave any moisture behind all right so we basically finished up this bumper unfortunately i did not record myself putting the paint protection over these uh, tow hook covers so but i did cover the tow hook covers and then wrap the material around to the back of them so they're completely covered i also didn't record obviously uh the trimming and wrapping the material into the tow hook covers so sorry about that <laughs> But I appreciate you guys taking a look at this video. Uh, you know, if you found it helpful, please hit the like button and look forward to seeing you on the next one. And so if you liked the, the video, uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next time around.